Check. Check, check, check. Will you check your levels? <coughs> Ooh. Check, hello. Check. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Uh, okay. No, okay. None of that anymore. Okay. Any questions over there? Yes. Are ready? <coughs> yes, sir. Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Marriage Radio. I host Melanie Studley. Good morning, my nice friends. My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Welcome to AOM Radio. Happy Thursday to you. It's good to be back. Yes, it is good to be back. Our show is real help for real couples, and we made this because marriage is really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, and as always, our show is brought to you by the Anatomy of Marriage app. It's a couples counseling app that's fast, fun, and never boring because we created it. Seth's a therapist. I'm awesome, and we made an app. You should go check it out at anatomyofmarriage.com. You can get it in the App Store and Google Play. That's right. The main reason we made the app is because Melanie's awesome. So That's right. I think she's summed it up pretty good. Good morning, Daniqua. Hope you do well this morning. And today, we do, well, no, every day on a Radio, we do four things. We start out with a prayer, and we start out, start out with a gratitude and intention, and then uh, some questions from the Anatomy of Marriage app. So mm -hmm. would you like to pray this morning? Uh, sure. All right. Okay. You can go for them. Dear God, thank you so much for all of our blessings. Thank you for the show. Thank you for our community of listeners and friends and our coaching clients and our children. Just thank you for everything. I pray that we take the blessings you give us and bring it back into the world and share all of that with mm -hmm. everyone. In amen. Name we pray, amen. That's a good one. In name take pray, the amen. blessings. <clears throat> take the blessings that we we've received. <clears throat> the things that we've learned and put back out. Right. We we received it with open arms. We use it, and then we put it back out in a good way with our own spin on it. I like right. that. That's, That's all I want, like, as a parent mm -hmm. like, for my kids to do. All right. My kids, not yours. Oh, uh, anyway, okay. uh, uh, prayer. So we encourage you to do these things with your partner. Pray with them. Do your intentions together, and then do your gratitudes together. Um, and, yeah, so intention is basically the behavior you wish that you had done better like yesterday, and mm -hmm. Ken says, amen. <laughs> Good morning, Summer. <laughs> that was funny. Um, okay, so what is your intention for today? What's up, Delana? The behavior you wish you had relationally with mm -hmm. me. Re uh, that I wish that I had, or... Like that you're going to do today. Right, right. I uh, want to... You know, it, it, I find myself doing the same things over and over, and that's that's a good thing because right. consistency is it's good. It's a key to success. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, constant motion in the same direction is a key to success, right? How the ocean works. <laughs> the motion of the ocean, that's right. <laughs> I uh, desire, want to see myself uh, looking into your eyes, not in like, you know, super googly soap opera way. If, if, if needed, I can do that. Of course, I can get you there. All I imagine is you with googly eyes on looking right. at me, which is hilarious. Yeah, that that would be about. funny. But the point of that is is to be connected with you, to, right. to be intentional with you, to <laughs> not think about my phone or the kids or putting the trees down or anything else is I'm here with you. Right. Be where I am. Be present where I am and with you. So right. that's uh, one thing I intend to do. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, my intention is also like it's the same energy of what you're saying, but it's fighting the resistance against mm -hmm. those things. I'm reading The War of Art mm -hmm. by Stephen Pressfield, yes. and he talks about resistance in it a ton. And I think that's a book mm -hmm. that we might should make co uh, coaching clients read. Uh, you know what? Short. I was thinking of I thought that, of first. No, I thought of first. No, I, so Me. I'm – yes, you. Me. I, what's up, Delano? I was thinking – Last night, as I'm rereading for the second time, do the work. Right. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make my clients read this because it is so good. Mm -hmm. And it talks about resistance. And every time we try to do something good, you say new. I thought of this last night, too. New level, new devil. Right. It's that resistance. And mm -hmm. I was talking with one of my clients this week. Resistance. It's every single time it's going to be there. It's not like I've got married. Okay, no resistance. Right. I you know, got a, a promotion. No mm -hmm. resistance. It's every single day. Right. And once we kind of kill resistance, mm -hmm. it still shows up. Right. It still shows up. But the point of killing it says, you know what? I can do this. It's almost like resistance it is a, a bull and a, you're a bull rider. Mm -hmm. You can either get like pummeled the crap out of, mm -hmm. which that's a sentence. And sometimes you do. Or you jump on and right. you... I don't know, red rates, I guess. Right. Do something like the clowns run after you. I don't Dust know. Dust and mud, bulls and blood. Throw oh! The throw. <laughs> what's that guy's name? Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks. Um, but yeah. together, what's up? Oh, I like it. So, Thanks. yeah, that's the, mm -hmm. my intention is mm -hmm. to fight against that resistance of, 
Oh, well, it's easier to just sit here. Oh, mm. well, I don't want to. Or, oh, I'm tired or whatever. Let me tell you a story. So I get up at five, right? And the resistance was screaming today. <laughs> screaming. And you I don't mean like waking me up. Too. Well, I, I I accepted it, you know? Yeah. And the first thing I was like, oh, well, we have interviews later. I better be rested and stuff, you know? But then I actually went to bed really late and felt like balls. So Okay, not the probes. You've said that before. No, but show. I didn't say it like that. Anyway, okay. anyway, so intention, and now let's do gratitude. So what are you thankful for that I do? Mm. Well, right I'm uh, thankful for your intention in certain areas. <sighs> That's such a cop out. Uh, how about are you thankful? Oh, do you that want me to I, tell you? Are you thankful that I did homeschool yesterday yes, for yes. the first time? We That's tried not it what out I was thinking about, but yes. And I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was impressed. I, I even thought to myself. Oh wait a minute! They're they're starting already, but I guess this is like a, 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 a test, a cold run, a soft a soft run. So right. yes, I am thankful for that. I'm glad that you prepared for it and care about our kids that much to right. do it. So thank you. I'm thankful. Although I said this to you yesterday, I'm gonna say it again today. Mm -hmm. You helped fix the boat engine battery. I oh guess. right. When we went out on the boat with uh, my brother and their kids, mm -hmm. and that was really fun, and I liked it, and like you helped tough do it and mm -hmm. so i'm just really thankful that you bring an energy of like i can do it i'll figure mm -hmm. it out i'll mm -hmm. go drive to oh 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 o'reilly <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh so cool. i'm thankful for that so do these together with your partners the best quickest fastest way to mm -hmm. get more intimacy love connection all that just it is absolutely and although we didn't do the show yesterday obs we weren't on here we, didn't do a live, we right? yeah we didn't do it live i said hey let's do the pigs together mm -hmm. and we just sat at our kitchen table and did the pigs together so it was good uh so when it says hi guys what's the name of the books again okay the author is stephen pressfield p-r-e-s-s-f-i-e-l-d stephen pressfield and the three books that I've read of his recently, he's got like a bill. Yeah, he's got a bunch of books. Uh, Do the Work, The Art of War. Nope, The War of Art. The War of Art, and... Turning Pro. Turning Pro. Turning Pro is great. I already read mm -hmm. that one. The War mm -hmm. of Art is great. And they're small. They're like little books. Yeah. You can also do the audio books, which are funny because they have music. Which I wasn't anticipating. Uh, I, I recommend the hard copy books because you can underline and highlight right. that kind of stuff. Yeah, I and they're, they're like $9 each. They're not expensive at all. They so. are great. Mm -hmm. Go get those and we should talk about them more. All right. And But if you do want a, uh, an audio book, you can use our special code, audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage to get a book free. You can get The Art of War, The War of, no. the war of Art for completely free. It's a little thicker, so that might be easier. If you go to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy and marriage, get it for free, check it out. Thank you. Yes. Um, all right, and so we're gonna dive into today's question. If you have a question that you wanna send into our show, send it in to hello at anatomyofmarriage.com, or you can go to our website, anatomyofmarriage.com, and click the little orange tab on the mm -hmm. side that will submit a question. Um, and this, we have a couple questions today. Mm. Uh, the first one is about miscarriage. It mm. says, my husband and I have known each other uh, since elementary school. We have had our ups and downs, and I can honestly say that I love him with all my heart. We have always wanted kids, and a while back, I got pregnant. We were so happy and excited when we found out, and it was like I fell in love with my husband all over again. He was doing little things again, gestures, flowers, going on dates again, sending sweet text messages. Uh, our love felt alive. Even sex was better. I actually felt like he was my partner again. Mm. Then I had a miscarriage and everything fell apart. We are actually on a break right now. When we are together, we can't help but fight. After the baby died, something inside of us died too. Our give a damn broke. Mm. I miss what we were and what I know we can be. I feel like a part of me is missing, but I'm not sure what to do. Should I fight or just let it go? I don't want to be the only one fighting for love or fighting for somebody that doesn't want to be here. What do I do? Mm. So our hearts go out to you for miscarriages. Mm. We well, we've we've had those one before, and um, I, I, I'm thinking a lot about this question. Number one, the oh my goodness, this is hard, mm -hmm. right? And speaking of resistance, this is a huge resistance, right? Mm -hmm. You're you're after this loss. Uh, first of all, you have to process and mourn the loss and acknowledge and put some sort of uh, I don't know, ceremony around it. And I'm not talking about like some like ceremony, like what you think, but an honoring, right. And honoring, like, and if, if you didn't do that, then I, I think you need to, because that does provide some closure. <clears throat> and then the other piece is, you know what? Uh, you guys have the ability to love and to have good sex and to be there for one another and to 
uh, support one another and to live in that. You, you have that, you've done that and things that we've done, we can always do again, right? Regardless if there's a baby involved or not. So this is only an opportunity to be like, ah, we've done it before. Let's do it again. I know this is a huge gut punch and stuff, but you can get over it. And because, and I, I say that with, with confidence because anything that we've done before, good or bad, we can do it again. We still have that mm -hmm. same potential, that same mindset, that same everything in us, right? Uh, you, you said, you know, give a damn. You have that in you because you've done it before, right? So I would encourage you to see this, to reframe this as such an opportunity to come together and to take what you've learned from this tragedy and make it put, uh, bring you closer together. Right. That's, that's my, that's my two cents about it. Yeah. I think those are, those are good tips and thoughts and stuff. I think from, a, so in another live we did another day, I don't know if it's the same person, but someone said, have I had a miscarriage? Can I talk about it? So we did an episode about miscarriage forever ago. And yes, I had a miscarriage. Uh, between our youngest and our oldest two. And I got really sick. I, like I miscarried, but then had tissue still inside. I did not get a DNC. And so I got really a really terrible infection that actually kills people. And I was in the hospital for four days, I think. Mm -hmm. We had a $10,000 hospital bill. It was really, really terrible. So it was like, compact, and it was a month after I lost the baby. So I had a miscarriage actually on my friend's wedding, uh, like on Halloween, but pretty much, uh, I had a miscarriage. No, I, got, I had a miscarriage on Halloween, got sick on my friend's at Chelsea's wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the next day was in the hospital, like super sick. I couldn't walk. It was horrendously scary. So not only did I lose a baby and was mourning that loss, like we had named the baby, we had told people about the baby. Uh, and, and I had two little kids at home who I had to deal with while you are miscarrying. Miscarrying is a process. It's mm -hmm. not like one and done, 10, 20 minutes later, right. you're good. It's a process. It's really scary. It's very, it's painful. It's confusing. And I had babies to take care of. You were off at work. Mm -hmm. It sucked the most. Mm -hmm. And then I then I got sick like a long, like a month later. So I get sick, go in the hospital, all of that. And the process when I got out of the hospital and was not like literally dying that I realized was that, and this is sort of a thought I had always kind of had when I've experienced death of a, you know, a friend, a family member, whatever I, this is how I imagine it. I'm sharing this because I think it might be helpful. I imagine that we have like when someone dies, we have, or we lose a baby or whatever it is. It's like the universe or God or whatever says, here is a container of all the tears you have to cry mm. to feel better about this. Mm. So I know that sounds really weird, but like when my cousin died out of the blue, she died when she was 16. It was like, if I tried to stop the tears from coming, they were going to come anyway. And it wasn't helpful to try mm. to stop them because it was like, I had a whole jar of like right. a huge, like hot air balloon size thing full of tears mm. that I had to get rid of. You had to get rid of or else there would be, uh, residual well not not residual okay. there'd be an imbalance in your body you know right. somebody said something to, along the line of like tears are a body's way of flushing emotions out oh wow you know mm -hmm. kind of thing and if you we look at it that way i really like what you said like okay when somebody passes or something like this happens god is like okay here is your cup full mm -hmm. you know and drop by drop right these have to be processed right. through and then guess what when you're done Mm -hmm. you know it, it you feel different like especially if, if for guys i don't know crying is really hard for mm -hmm. me like not emotionally like I, I don't have weird judgment on it but it it is so draining like if i cry right. it's like something that i've been carrying around forever right. and then i'm just like okay i need to take a nap for five days right and, and that's the way to look at it like when we have these sort of like a surplus of tears you're mm -hmm. just carrying it if you don't actually grieve this loss, you are carrying it with you everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And it will, it, it's like a overflowed dam, like a flooded dam or right. something like water is going to come out. Like stuff is going to get funky if it's not like taken care of. It or has to processed. Go, it, How about this? It has to go somewhere and unresolved, like for it says unresolved emotions come up somewhere else later right. in uglier ways. Right. right. So if you think about the dam analogy, 
it's like, okay, they need to let the release valve right. off the dam. Right. All dams have that, right? right. Like, and then it, it goes appropriately down the river right. below the dam, mm -hmm. right? Oh, guess what? We don't open that thing. It's Some flooding. erosion yeah. is going to happen over mm -hmm. here and it's going to flood the city right. or something else. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's going to take houses out or, right. or whatever. So you have to release it. And I, you know, I'm thinking of uh, in therapy world, Elizabeth Kubler Ross and her stages of grief, you know, there's like acceptance, there's mourning. And I mean, there's, there's denial, there's acceptance or mourning and then acceptance and like, okay, moving yeah. forward. And that whole process is a process. Just like Melanie said, a miscarriage itself is a process it's mm -hmm. not like boom okay over. check that off my list like, it, it's not that it's your body going very slowly it, right uh, this is a weird thing but okay a woman doesn't have a baby just like poof right, right? <laughs> it takes hours and hours and hours of your body getting ready right before delivery like mm -hmm. what how dilated are you right, kind of thing right. you, you know what I'm saying? Whole, it, everything is a process yes. because if you just poof had the baby stuff would be terrible right you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. So it's a process where you have to adjust and pivot and adjust and accept right. and, and go with. And I want to offer this thought just as a thought mm -hmm. that men are typically not, um, they're not necessarily given a, a free pass to be like, Oh, your wife lost a child. How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. It's usually like your poor wife. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is they have all this sadness, feelings, thoughts, um, disappointment, confusion, whatever, and no one is addressing it because the wife is the one who's suffering, mm -hmm. right? And so that that is an element of your husband may not feel like he can share it, but he may have, I mean, sure, he has an enormous burden of his own feelings and thoughts and emotions that even the burden of them mm -hmm. is confusing enough that the dam is going out of the banks right. and flooding the town. Like that is and, what and is guess, happening. Guess what it's manifesting as? fighting and we're fighting right we're, we can't be together we can't right. do this so you have to process this and i i swear it if we reframe this and look at it as an opportunity to come together mm -hmm. then oh boy the strength the shared experience right. the relationship that can happen out of that mm -hmm. the can i have to cry on your shoulder okay you can cry on my shoulder for right. hours right? right like when things like that have happened with us, if we've been in a good way and seen it as an opportunity, not right. just like you, you, this, this, mm -hmm. then after that is like, no, he's my ride or die. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. oh, Seth can weather mm -hmm. strong stuff, you know? One thing I do want to say too about this is that, um, what's up, Cody? How it made about? me think about this is that the, um, the idea of a miscarriage, like Seth said, this is a tragedy. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a tragedy personally. But something that helped me, this might not help everyone. Some of you guys might find this offensive. Death is not actually a tragedy. Death is a part of being alive. Mm -hmm. And it helps me deeply to not be afraid of these types of things when I realize that life is a circle. Death is a part of it. Mm -hmm. People have miscarriages every single day. So as hard as it is to manage personally, mm -hmm. interpersonally, relationally, it is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. It is more common than not. <laughs> like it's an unbelievable amount of people have mm -hmm. miscarriages. So thinking of right. it that way may be helpful to you. It also may not be for me. It was very helpful to be like, as, here's a random example. When my grandmother died, it was like people die every day. Mm -hmm. Like thousands and mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of people die every single well, day. That, that sounds cold. Of course. It's like, well, okay. People die. However, what it is, this is therapy speak now what we're trying to talk about is the normalization yes. of it. So when we find out that, oh, I'm not the only one feeling like this, there are other people out there. Mm -hmm. And if we take advantage of that and reach out to talk to other people who have experienced uh, miscarriage, you know what I'm saying? So I we're normalizing yeah. it and then we're saying, okay, yeah, death happens every day. My grandma doesn't die every day because I only have one. That can only happen once or twice to me. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling feelings. Let me go out mm -hmm. and process these feelings with other people. Right. I was on a coaching call yesterday and my client was talking about, you know, the, the, sometimes we don't have anyone we can talk to, to right. be straight up accountable, right. like in marriage and workout and diet and business or whatever. It's like, I've never had an accountability thing. Right? right. And so what I think what we're getting at there is not being accountable to process a loss, but just, 
knowing that other people have experienced right. it and will walk with me through it. And right. I'm not the only one. Right. And here. so in the way, in this way, with miscarriage in particular, there's this thing that I did and that you can do is that ask people about their experience with a miscarriage and you will be amazed at how many women will tell you about their story because right. so many women who you didn't know right. have had miscarriages. And the great part about it is that they come, they will help you understand how they walked through it, how they process it, what their feelings were, and then it will help you process it mm -hmm. on your own, if that makes sense. Cody said, came in at a heavy time. I see. It's like you walk at the altar call and I don't know what to do. That's right. You're like, oh. <laughs> or you walk in at the altar call. Okay, like, somebody's hey. yeah. <laughs> So actually, we're, we're talking about other stuff too, but yeah. That was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, I hope that that helped thing. with the miscarriage conversation. I want to make sure there's no other. So uh, Bri Brene says, in my experience, not letting the tears go and storing it up results in bitterness and eventually depression. Yes, tears are a hormonal process. And although hard, they will definitely give you relief eventually. Um, and being tough and holding it back actually causes weakness and resentment. If you share that with the person you're close with, it will strengthen the relational bond mm. by revealing the softness. Mm. Oh my gosh, you just hit on something so powerful. So I think I've talked about this before, but when doctors have researched tears, like the actual liquid that comes out of your eyes, mm. happy tears are different than sad tears. Mm. They do have a different, different chemical makeup. They're mm. not the same thing. So you are exactly right when you say that it like, it's like storing toxins inside mm. of you. Like, Oh, this poison is supposed to come out of me. Oh, I'll just keep it in and carry it around yeah, and see what happens. It, yeah. So I love the, that. I love that. Then it goes to other organs and uh, right, you know, what we right. don't what we don't process. Uh, so what was I going to say? Okay, uh, Lexi on what is that? The Facebooks says mm -hmm. that makes sense. The idea that other people have been through this and made it to the other side, not being alone is a right. big comfort. Right. Yes, it is. So this this the, okay. This is a perfect thing. So uh, Cody, my man, uh, over on Instagram. Uh, talking about not being alone is a big comfort so we do coaching now right and it's it's really our jam we you offer know, we coaching. have we offer coaching mm -hmm. and we found it to be our jam because i'm a therapist done that for years and years and years and i've had uh, some some frustration with therapy because i can't you know just like get in there and shake that client right. and say you got this mm -hmm. come on let's right. do that so uh, not doing stuff alone is a big part of coaching mm -hmm. right having that daily accountability yeah. with me or with you on goals that our clients co-create like okay let me check in with you how's this mm -hmm. going oh awesome you did it right? right and sometimes we need that coaching piece to be like i kind of don't believe in myself right now i need to be real with somebody right. else and it's not like i'm doing the work for mm -hmm. the clients because that doesn't work it's saying hey you got this mm -hmm. and they're like oh my gosh i do you're right. Let's go mm -hmm. kind of thing. So if you have any questions about coaching, hit us up at coaching at anatomy .com and let's talk. Let's jump on a call mm -hmm. and let's get you to where you want to be. Coaching made a huge difference in our life. We did it last year and it was rad and uh, it's it. Gosh, it works. Right. And I want to say, too, for the ladies, like when I work with my wife clients, uh, the funny thing about it is that I am the friend that they can like vent to about their husband but who is helpful about it and says, wait, wait, wait. Okay. I get it. He did right. this. You don't like that. I get it. Got it. Been there. Mm -hmm. And then I can say, but here's what we're going to do. Right. Here's how you process this right now today. And I do that for you every single day of the week, mm -hmm. except for Sundays. Yeah. Uh, Sundays let's see. Um, Cody, Cody Jefferson says that we're bad A coaches. I can't <laughs> cuss on this podcast. Cody. Um, let's see. So someone else said I had, I have had two. One was very hard physically for me as well. I needed surgery and blood transfusions, and mm. I'm always here to talk to anyone dealing with this issue. Thank mm. you. Pretty, pretty Britty. Pretty Britty. That's a very cute tag. But mm. um, yes, miscarriages can be terrifying. And mm. women, we are the mothers of the world. We can bond together through this. And it's amazing when you start, when you have sort of like communal mindset about it, community-based thinking mm. around it, it's mm. different. Hive mind. <laughs> Indiana Jones, best movie ever. Okay, are we ready? Second question. Okay, my husband and I are in a parent-child relationship dynamic. He is the parent and I am the child. I have been, we've been together for 14 years, married for almost five. I have done a lot of very regrettable things in, to him in the past and he has suffered every type of abuse imaginable as a child mm. and had to grow up very fast. We have been fighting a lot throughout our relationship and have reached a point where he keeps threatening divorce. He says that he is super resentful of our past, understandably. And there was a lot in the email that I took out, like she did bad things on purpose to him. Mm -hmm. um, 
and he has not given me for forgiven me for the big things that has happened in our relationship. He would like me to make a grand gesture to show him that I love him and care about him or say that I need to do a grand gesture to buy myself time to work on myself and our relationship. How do I properly make up for our mistakes that I have made in the past? My family of origin never apologizes. And after a few days of anger, you just talk like nothing else and like nothing ever happened. I have cut them out of my life due to them being a negative factor for hubs, my relationship, etc. I am not wanting to focus on what he should do because up until this point, he has always been working on his family of origin mm. while I have been telling him to just accept my flaws and all basically not wanting to grow. She's saying she doesn't want to grow. Mm -hmm. I have been seeing a counselor and therapist for myself and have been working my on my own family of origin. Um, my husband has a bad experience with therapists. I just need help focusing on what are things that I can do to apologize sincerely for things that I have done in the past. Mm -hmm. He needs more action than words. And I find myself having a hard time staying aware. Any tips on this as well? Oh man. So I have a lot of, uh, okay. This is great. Cause this I'm reading into, there's a lot of insights, yeah, there's in a lot this, in that right? One. There is some, I, I see some growth of self-awareness that you've had. Like I haven't worked on my family of origin. I just want you to accept my flaws. So I'm not endorsing any of that and I'm not giving you like, oh, great, great job. You get a free pass. Right. I'm saying, hey, you are fighting the resistance. As we talked about in Stephen Pressfield books, you're fighting the resistance, but you screwed up majorly. Mm -hmm. So pay for that. Well, I don't, okay, not, not, pay, no, no, I'm not, not saying don't say not, that. Not pay for it, but hey, you have a lot to, a lot of stuff to clean up. Yes. It's not going to get easier. And this reminds me of the time when we were in the, the thick of our, stuff i said you know what um i don't expect anything from melanie and right. this was my own thing it wasn't like she was doing super great or anything because it was terrible oh yeah i was awful too. but i just clicked a switch and said you know what you don't deserve anything don't expect anything and do the freaking work mm -hmm. and i just blasted through every piece of s that you gave me right, right? i gave you loads of it and i was consistent and did the work and one of the grand gestures was prayed every day, a billion times a day with her, no matter if she was trying to slap me in the face kind of thing. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You didn't. Well, yeah, I know you mean. whatever. But metaphorically, that was the metaphorically grand gesture. And another thing that I thought about this is since you're in counseling, you need coaching, my friend. And I'm not just saying, oh, we do coaching. Go find a different coach. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that I have been through the value of coaching. I have provided coaching and seeing the value for my clients and like you need somebody to kick your butt and say keep on going keep on going like if you find yourself in hell don't stop right 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 keep, if you're going through hell keep going mm -hmm. right because if you stop if you let off the gas then poof you're going to be there and all that stuff he may be right for all that like right crazy <laughs> abuse that you put him through if, if you know i am completely endorsing people that have good boundaries and say you are not doing this to me anymore. Right. That is it. Right. right. So maybe he's doing that to you. And I'm not saying that they're not hope, but do some grand gesture, get coaching, coaching at anatomy marriage.com. Go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Our former coach was just on here. Go check him out. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need, you need coaching. Right. And the thing that I would say is in this email, like I said, I always edit the emails down because sometimes they're super long and she went into depth on some of the things that she's done, which were very sort of like malicious vibes. Right. Mm -hmm. And done over years, like when she was younger, those kind of things. But there was a lot of, I did this because I am this. Mm -hmm. I'm a nine on the Enneagram. I'm a, I have this childhood. Mm -hmm. My family doesn't apologize. I this, I that. So there's tons of labels. Like the, the email was full of labels. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Acknowledging that you have a label does not give you a free pass to not change. Mm -hmm. So just because I say, well, you see, my ankle is broken here. I couldn't mm -hmm. possibly jog mm -hmm. again ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Accept that, yeah, right? But, like that is not fair of your spouse. It's like if right. you know what I mean. What are that, you trying that, to interrupt me for? That that's not that's not a free pass, right? No. And so okay, and it doesn't mean that you've done any work. That's what I'm trying to get at. You cannot be like, well, I'm a seven. I just don't care about people. Or I'm right. an eight, so I'm a boss, and I don't this, and I'm bossy, blah so blah. But so, you can't. You hold on, uh, please. You can't use that and pretend that that equates to doing the work. Right. It doesn't. What are you going to say? Now? What's up, Tierney? Good to see you. What's up, New Marriage Material? Glad to see you on. De depression, anxiety, all kinds of diagnoses are real. Obviously, 
I've, I have the flu, you know, right. I have whatever, psoriasis, <laughs> you know, these things are real. Mm -hmm. They are never an excuse to be, well, I, I'm, I'm calling a depression day today. Right. You know, oh, I said all those things because I'm depressed. I said all those things or did all those things because I have like super anxiety. You, you know, in golf, we call it a mulligan, you know, and you're only supposed to take one mulligan per nine holes, I think. But, you know, if you get it at the tee box and crack it and you slice it and it goes, you worm know, burner. <laughs> yeah, a worm burner or whatever. And it goes 100 miles over here. Okay, you can get a mulligan. Yeah. You only get one, though, right. right, per nine holes. And if you cheat and are goofy, like I used to do in high school, it's like take a mulligan every hole. Right. Well, we all did because it was like we're just playing. Right. Uh, it doesn't work that way, guys. You can't take a mulligan with, with your life, mm -hmm. with your relationship. You know, oh, I'm depressed. So right. that was, you know. And it, you said psoriasis, which I think is really funny. It's like if you have like eczema or something mm -hmm. you're not like oh i have eczema i'm healing i healed it because i figured out that i had it like no you go get the lotion you change your diet you go right. to the doctor mm -hmm. you do things to change the fact that you have eczema you don't mm -hmm. just like sit there covered mm -hmm. in scales you you do work my sister has eczema i can talk about it like that <laughs> she's so gross i'm just kidding mom. we all have mom, mom. <laughs> no, um so good I, morning truth I, I think that that is, to me, what I what I hear in this email is that I'm pretending I've done work because I've identified my problems. Mm -hmm. I've identified what bothers my husband, what makes him so upset. Mm -hmm. I'm pretending I've done harder work than I've actually mm -hmm. done. And this is the coaching side right. of me. This is the part of me that's like, I have mm -hmm. been there. I have pretended those same BS things. Mm -hmm. And I'm mad at myself and you now because you're bringing it back up. <laughs> like it's it doesn't Some, work. <clears throat> sometimes we think, and what, what is it called? It, it it comes up in a lot of circles. <laughs> we think that if we're listening to if we're listening to the podcast, if we're oh, going to oh, the seminars, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we are, if you're you a know, seminar junkie and you go to seminars, but you literally never do any of the that's work right. that they say. That's like <laughs> the, here's the equivalent to that. Oh man, how many gyms are in my area? You know, like I, in, in Maple Valley, I think there's like three gyms, right. right? Probably more. I get a membership to all of them. Right. And on Mondays, I go to this one. On Tuesdays, I go to that one. On Wednesdays, I go to this one. But, but you never what? go in. You just drive. No, I, I do go in, walk around, yeah, you know, talk to people. I got my tank top on and stuff. Your gym t shirt. But I never get on the equipment and right. get stuff, right? right? So what's that's, the deal right that's pretend and here's where the hard work comes in here's the turning pro vibes of mm. stephen pressfield I like the it. do the work vibes of stephen pressfield like just knowing what the problem is is not doesn't matter it doesn't even matter it sure it will help you know how to fix it but it doesn't change anything you've done mm -hmm. and that's the hard part is i do agree there is a time when you set this in our marriage i did it in our marriage where you literally have to sit in the s that you put into that marriage, especially mm. if you did things maliciously to harm your partner and you're trying to repair it. You have to sit in the pile of hot, steamy, stank crap to fix. That's a grand gesture. Mm. And I'm not kidding. You cannot flippantly excuse it. Oh, well, that time that I like stole money out of your girl, whatever, get over it. Get over it. Mm. It's, it that's old me. <laughs> Pay it back with. 15% interest, right. that's a grand gesture. Right. That is making, uh, so it's not like, we're not saying like do some weird penance where you have to crawl on your knees and whip your back or something no, like that. Not, you know? yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, man, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start cussing on the show. I'm I going to, and to. I will never go back. Oh no, we can't <laughs> it's cuss not, live children here these yes, days you can. sometimes. Our yeah. own never. Any, okay, anyway, uh, it's like, oh, I made this mistake. I see it. Here's my um, repentance. Here's my, uh, what is it called? Um, um, contrite heart. Right. Right. And the dog what is, is that? The, and, and it's like, no matter what, here we go. Right. You know, so a grand gesture is funny. I was talking to another client yesterday. And well, anyway, uh, how does it hurt you to make things up? You know what right. I'm saying? Like, right. it, it's like this. Uh, here was a good lesson that my dad actually taught me, right? We used to go to this old man's house that we'd board horses at, right? And he was a super old man. And dad borrowed with permission one of his tools one time. And it was like a sling blade thing, you know? And the handle just broke. <sighs> broke completely, right? So what did dad do? Did he be like, oh, sorry, it broke. You know, did he tape it up with duct tape? No. He went and bought a brand new one right. and said, I broke your thing. Here you go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
he could have just put a crappy old yeah. handle on or something like that, but he wanted to do right because it was his fault. Right. Right. I mean, well, it was his right. responsibility. Right? Yes. Yeah. So in that, make a grand gesture, mm -hmm. make it hurt. Yes. Make it matter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm thinking of? Like in financial ways, we value more what we pay for. Right. We have skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, like this property, this is our property. It's only going to be nice. If we do the work, right. you know, it's not a rental property that we don't give an S about. It's not your mom and dad didn't buy it for us. Mm -hmm. It's ours. It will, it will sink or swim according to the work right. that we put into right. it. Delana says probably a good thing. Sammy and I haven't done an episode with y'all because it will require a lot of editing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I can mute stuff out. Ain't beep, beep. Uh, but the thing that I think is really important in that too, is that that idea of how does it, okay, let me say it a different way. <clears throat> it took me, Honestly, meditating on Seth's pain to understand why apologizing matters. Mm -hmm. I don't, my family never apologizes. They also don't re readily say hello, goodbye, thank you, you're welcome, good job. They just don't. I don't care that they don't. It's how I grew up. It doesn't matter to me. I don't even notice it. But Seth notices it. It hurts him. And if I am flippant about things that hurt him and matter to him, I will be damaging our relationship, right? Because this relationship is not the same as me and my parents, right? Absolutely not. So the thing that's important for the thing that was important for me was mm -hmm. to think about how I had hurt Seth. Like, no joke, meditate on it until it hurt me. Okay, I know that sounds really weird, but one of the things that helped is thinking of Seth as a child, thinking of Seth as like a young kid, and like I did that to that kid when he turned 35 or whatever, like I said that to that human, mm -hmm. when I started to humanize Seth, because for some reason I had kind of dehumanized you, you're, you're strong. You can take it. It doesn't matter. You're a man. You're older than I am, whatever you're, you're tough, whatever. Right. I had dehumanized and sort of desensitized myself to your own emotions, your mm -hmm. own experience. A lot of that comes from my own father right. who's missing part of his brain mm -hmm. and is like a robot on a genius robot who doesn't ever share his feelings. So I wasn't allowing you that same, I wasn't giving you the grace that I would want it to have received, mm -hmm. right? You didn't know to. So family right. origin, you had to be aware of it right. and then willing to do something about right. it. Like, and this reminds me of what this lady said. Oh, my husband has done a buttload of family right. origin work. And I haven't done anything. What? Right. And she said, that makes I'm, me mad. I'm, I know. And she's like, and I'm, I'm like a child. Right. Like so he's like an adult and I'm like a child. I'm not no. mad at you and I'm not no, judging no, 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 you, no. but I'm saying, girlfriend, right. you are more than this and mm -hmm. you can do it. Right. right. You can't do it alone. It's like uh, it's new marriage material. It's like linking your hearts and valuing what your partner does. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Love yeah. It. Yeah. It, it's mm -hmm. this idea that it helped me when I understood how it would hurt Seth or how it has hurt Seth or how mm -hmm. it did hurt him. When I sat in that idea, meditated on it, like thought about it from all the angles I could think about it from, that's when I, I didn't have to force an apology. It wasn't pretend. I didn't have to conjure up some way to apologize. I didn't need a to-do list mm -hmm. how to apologize. It came naturally mm -hmm. because I, feel, I felt it. And that's the thing that I'm wanting this person to feel. I don't care what... No, keep on going. Like, I don't care if you have a bad family of origin. If you know it, start working on it. Mm -hmm. Do the work to get you past that label. The labels aren't going to change anything, right? right? Just being like, oh, well, my family doesn't apologize. We'll have a fun divorce because right. that's what you're walking towards. If that's all the work you're putting in, mm -hmm. my family doesn't apologize. That's Not right. enough work. Labels inherently don't change anything. It gives you a, a segue, an open, runway, an open runway into now I know what to do. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was diagnosed with depression. Let me learn about it. Right. How can I go through it? What are the best treatments? What can I do? Right. Mm -hmm. It's all before you. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Like I was saying in before with the, the miscarriage couple, look at this, reframe this as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds, it, it can even sound morbid, like miscarriage opportunity. What the? No. What are, yeah. What, what I the, know what you mean. Right. What yeah. are you talking about? Mm -hmm. But if we slow down and take a step back and reframe and go, oh, we both went through this, mm -hmm. her physically, obviously, but I was there to make right. it happen. Right. Um, how can we go through this together? Right. right. Good morning, Lily. Uh, somebody, when you were talking about truly like make it hurt you and go, oh my gosh, what was this? 
this is really funny. So back in the early days of Emory, I used to be in the band Emory, right? And I had a motorcycle and I also worked at Starbucks and I had to get up at 3.30 in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And it was the winter time. So I had to let the motorcycle warm up, right? And I got up at 3.30, started the motorcycle and the muffler was messed up on it or something and then went in and took a shower. And Toby was like, it was 3.45 in the morning. I got in the shower. Toby was like, what are you doing? <laughs> what, what are you doing? doing right. and i just thought because i was so focused i gotta get i gotta get to work right. i gotta start the motorcycle it's on the way to, it's the only way to get to work and i was like i don't know i am so sorry <laughs> like, you like who really starts like a motorcycle at 3 30 in the morning and, and then goes and takes right. a shower and is like Rah! yeah starting <laughs> up and the, he was just it's like he wasn't mad or anything it was just like what is this <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it was really funny because right. i was like I'm so sorry. Right, right. I just wasn't thinking. So mm -hmm. that kind of thing, like, what are you doing? So like, mm -hmm. apologize, feel that, feel that pain of like, oh, I made a terrible choice here. This is a really, Brene says labels, put a sugar label on the jar of salt and put that in your coffee and drink it. Labels don't change reality. That is really cool. A sugar label on the jar of salt. No, oh, right. That's pretty good. Um, Somebody says, "I wonder if Seth would have cate categorized himself as addicted to porn." The story usually goes that he was watching porn. I ask because, if so, I wonder what the process of recovery. We've had was. several questions about that. Yeah, we should just do a whole episode about it. Addicted? No, not at all. I have I have more of an addiction, and I can say this, and I'm not joking. More of an addiction to pastries than food than like looking at inappropriate things. Uh, and so it wasn't that hard to be like. No. Right. For some people. Yeah. It's, I mean, they're, they're, I've had clients who, who have actual been like sex addicts, right. right? Like not just porn, but sex addicts. You have even that. So that question is really good. We should do an episode about it. The book, uh, the art, you know, the war of art. He talks about this stuff in it. And it's amazing because he's like, even sex addiction is really just fighting resistance mm -hmm. because it's easier to go have sex than it is to write the manuscript you've always wanted to write. Mm -hmm. It's easier to look at porn than it is to face your own demons of I am a selfish a-hole. Mm -hmm. It's easier to, like he even uses the thing of Adolf Hitler was a painter. Um, mm -hmm. He was like studying to be a paint, painter. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you can go so far as to say it was easier for Hitler to like murder people mm -hmm. than to become a brilliant painter. And to fully and he's like, you, you have this yeah. shadow self, this shadow mm -hmm. career that you chase, the shadow version of you. And I think everyone can attest to that. Like, what is the thing you wish you could do? Like, I'll tell you what I wish I could do. You want to know what it is? I want to be, <laughs> what is his name? Jad Abumrad, I want to be Latif Nasser. I want to have a TV Nobody show. Nobody knows who that is. Oh, they do. I want to film Dr. Dan Siegel. I want to do a show about marriage. I mean, mm -hmm. I know exactly what I want mm -hmm. to do. My shadow self says a podcast will be okay. Mm -hmm. My shadow self says, eh, it's too hard to do that. Mm -hmm. But do just enough to feel okay. Right. And so that, I mean, uh, seriously, read The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield or Turning Pro or Do the Work. They're all amazing books. Mm -hmm. And it's this thing that I, I, I just, I don't know. I think it's really awesome. And I'm glad that you brought that up and we should do an episode about it. Yeah, definitely. And I would like to do an episode uh, about some of the Stephen Pressfield books about yeah. the shadow self and where we're feeling resistance. Uh, it, this is really interesting. So when we feel resistance, uh, we can trick resistance, not really trick it, but reframe it and say, oh, that's my North Star. The thing that I'm feeling the most right. pushback about, right. that's what I should go do. Right. Like you, you feel the, the you feel like, that much amount of guilt about looking at porn. That's your true north. What is the that? guilt what, that what you that feel mean? is uh, you're you're actually going beyond. You're passing what your true north is. You went, oh, there's true north. The, the like twinge of what if I could, and then you just turn your back on it and go do mm -hmm. the thing that numbs you out. That's or, easier. Or if I if I'm getting resistance from no, I think he means it a different. Well, way. I think I if if you yeah. if if I if I. Uh, have so much resistance on, on working out, going to the gym, go, oh, I just want to sleep. Uh. So that's like shows its cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is your true north, which going to the gym is true right. north because it, it encompasses health, mm -hmm. discipline, uh, consistency, all that stuff. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, I think I was thinking of it in a different way. No yeah. big deal. But anyway, they're really amazing books, mm -hmm. and uh, you should check them out. Okay, so uh, somebody says, thank you for the answer in the books. Yeah, I would absolutely love a whole episode from you guys about that. That's 
what I'm in recovery from and about to celebrate my one year wedding awesome. anniversary. Good job. Awesome. Happy one year almost. Good job. I think recovery and the whole, even recovery community, no matter what we're talking about, alcohol, drugs, food, uh, narcotics, sex, narco, well, the same thing as drugs, anything. It is, it all has the same underlying things, which is so, so interesting to me as a psychologist, as a person. And then obviously someone who, has resistance, has, well, we all have resistance. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right. All right. Fascinating. Let's subject. do some conversation starters of the day from the Anatomy of Mar Marriage app. You guys check it out on anatomyofmarriage.com. Uh, who was or is someone that you admire and why? Jad Abumrad, Latif Nasser. Um, that I admire? Yeah. Robert Colwich. Okay, well, why do you admire them? Because they're creatives and they do it. Mm -hmm. They just do the hard work mm -hmm. and they go out there and ask the questions mm -hmm. and make everything amazing. Yeah. Like, I love them. This is a good question because for me, it's hard for me to think of someone straight off the bat because I want to be sure uh, that I give a really good answer. I, yeah, I don't you, know. You know, these, you know what I'm To me, it's like these people are who I want to be. Mm -hmm. Like, that sounds weird, but I have this, like, Glenn Washington is one of them. They're all podcast producers mm -hmm. and, like, editors and stuff. Mm -hmm. But they're, like... Ah, I know where I'm going now. Mm -hmm. They are the models mm -hmm. of what I want to create and how I want to be, like so, right. so firmly. I admire mind. people like Jesse uh, Eitzler. You know who that is? Yeah, he, he, always. he's uh, who's the lady that has Spanx? Uh, Sarah Blakely. Yeah, they're they're married, mm -hmm. right? And he started a company, and he's old, and he does all these crazy things, sort of like Richard Branson. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And not because these people are millionaires, because they are doing awesome things right. that are just have awesome. no boundaries, you know, mm -hmm. like Elon Musk or other people like that. Right. You know? If you could go back and redo one day of your life, what day would it be? And what would you do differently? Mm. I don't know. The, I, the questions like that yeah, uh, are, are just kind of, kind of goofy because guess what? We've learned lessons from I know. those. Well, well, that's things, our mindset. You know? But I think, uh, yeah, I think if I could go back and redo a day, it would be, any day that was filled with anxiety or fear, mm. I could I would redo them and be like, stop, stop. I, I think of it differently. Like uh, on really awesome days, I was like when we travel or something, you know, like when we went to Iceland, that one day where we were, I would have taken more pictures. Right, or that's what I, I would have said, say. oh, let's go here. Let's spend more time here. You know, right. if we were back in Iceland, then I said, let's go to the lava caves. Caves? <laughs> you just said lava caves. Lava caves and take the helicopter and. Uh, I know. Go down and I go wish right. we had gone in the volcano and I wish we had snorkeled between the tectonic plates. Yes, yeah, stuff but like we that. We aren't rich. <laughs> stuff like that. And that's what it would have taken. That's right. Anyway, um, so guys, thank you for joining us again today. Remember, we, we mentioned a lot of stuff, a lot of resources. Anatomy, uh, no, audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage to get a free audiobook. We talked about Stephen Pressfield, do the work and the war the war of art etc and also the really big thing is coaching coaching at anatomy of marriage.com send us an email there you will get resources you will get your butt kicked you will grow you will thank us later for it and you will thank yourself for making that investment that no one no way no how ever can take away from you that's right all right all right we love you guys have an amazing day all right bye guys bye